Whew. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> can you see me? I can't see you. As you can see, I've had quite a time getting set up here in uh, beautiful and sweaty hot <laughs> October. They have a lot of nerve to call this October down here in Charleston, South Carolina. Anyway, hello, my name's Dan. This is Daily Art Adventure 746. Woohoo! <laughs> As I usually say. <laughs> and uh, let me show you where I'm painting. This I am in a, I am absolutely in a beautiful location. This is at the corner of Broad Street. I'm a standing on Broad Street. Down there by that white church is uh, Meeting Street. And today I'm going to do a vertical painting. Maybe you can see why. Maybe you can see why it's vertical because I want to capture that. Sorry, hang on, little interruption there. Um, so I'm doing 30 by 40 inch vertical painting. And the scene is gorgeous. I came downtown and picked it yesterday, so I knew where to come today. I expect to be painting uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, it's good to see all of you here. Well, no chat's coming yet, but that'll come in a minute. All right, let's get started. So I expect this to be a late, late afternoon or early evening painting, later than it is right now, and it's 5.30. So the sky, I expect, will still be blue-ish, and everything else down here is, is warm-ish. Hmm. All right, so blue-ish sky, cool sky. Then let's let's start then with uh, with warm stuff up here at the top, and then graduating to some cooler stuff. I'm going to pick medium cool for the moment, green and yellow, applied with dirty brushes. Let's go now to yellow and orange. And then let's go cool for real now. So clean up my brushes just a little bit. And again, I always feel compelled to say to any, oh, I can't splatter. <laughs> I take it the owners of this building would not take kindly to, um, flecks of paint on there. I'm already looking to make sure I haven't already flecked, flecked some paint on there. By the way, for what it's worth, <laughs> speaking of flecking paint, um, I carry with me a can of denatured alcohol. I try to always have it with me. Because denatured alcohol is a solvent for uh, acrylic paint. So, of course, depending on the surface upon which I've splattered, and if it's a hard and impervious surface, I can get it off easily with denatured alcohol. So anyway, I hope I won't need it. Let's go now to some white. All right, so I'm, I feel always compelled to say Hello, Thomas, Thomas Valik. <laughs> Thank you for watching me, my friend. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to say I, I feel compelled to explain this part of my painting technique or process because it is so unusual. So basically, what am I doing? I'm slapping down just bold and broad strokes of paint that are 
not related or only rated, related in an oppositional mode to the image. In other words, there's going to be a, st a steeple here, so there's no indication of steeple there. There are going to be a number of vertical marks here, so I'm quite careful to avoid vertical marks down here, right? So I have no idea which of these marks will still be visible in the final painting. By the way, with one exception, I've never said this before, with one exception, and that is that the white paint that I'm doing right now, I know these marks, in fact, will be visible in the final painting, not as white, but as texture. So actually, even if all these colors are covered up, which I hope they're not, but even if they were all to be covered up, the white paint that I just put on there will not be covered up. That will continue to appear almost certainly throughout the entire um, painting process, but not as white, but as texture. They'll be seen as, as strokes. All right, oh, let me use these same brushes I just used that are not at all clean of the white paint that I just put on them. Well, that's unfortunate. I have a in-ear monitor that is already telling me that its battery is dead. Hang on just a second. I have one back up, but one is not enough for a long night of painting. So I will I will go plug that in later. All right, the temperature is finally getting reasonable here. Whew. And uh, let's do some drawing. Wow. I don't want that steeple right in the middle, that's for sure. I am indeed, as is my normal, uh, I am indeed going to have the steeple, just the very top of it. Just a little, looks like a weather vane, actually, at the top. Um, I am going to have that go off the top of the canvas. Which is very, very typical for me, be very unusual for me to paint a tall object uh, that did not go off the top of the canvas. I'll tell you a funny story along those lines. It wasn't too many years ago, maybe a year or two ago, one of my gallery owners called me And she said, I have a couple here, and they're interested in one of your skyline views of Raleigh. <laughs> but they're bothered by the fact that in your painting, and she was very embarrassed, she did, she did not readily uh, give me all this information. I had to kind of pull it out of her. I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> she knew enough to be embarrassed. <laughs> the couple asking the question did not know enough to be embarrassed. Anyway, they, they liked the painting of the skyline, but they were troubled by the fact that some of the tops, the very tiny tops of some of the tallest buildings in my painting went off whoops that line's not right hang on went off the top of the canvas so <laughs> here that's not the funny part i mean that is kind of weird but okay here's the funny part <laughs> so they said so we're wondering if he could do another painting of the same scene 
And they said, instead of, they didn't say, and make the building shorter so that they, we can see the tops of the buildings. They said, could he do it on a slightly larger canvas? <laughs> In other words, they looked at the painting and said, you know, if that canvas is just two inches taller, he could, he could have fit the whole building in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that is, I'm sorry. I'm probably laughing at somebody, some poor, poor person who is obviously not an artist at all. But what, what oh my goodness, what a funny solution. Um, bio, so anyway, I ended up never doing it. I, I mean, I, I, sh I, gave, them, I gave them a um, estimate. I charged them, you know, an extra $100 for uh, stretching a custom canvas. But anyway, they never got back to me, so I was <laughs> just as well. <laughs> but <laughs> instead of saying, could he paint the building sh smaller so that, they, so that the tops are included in the painting, they said, can he paint, can he paint on a larger canvas? <laughs> oh, that is just hilarious, anyway. <laughs> And if that was one of you, <laughs> you think I'm going to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm quite sure that was nobody uh, watching me right now. <laughs> oh. You know, we all uh, speaking of laughing at people who are dumb at things that you're not dumb at. <laughs> we are all, aren't we? We are all, all of us so much what and who we are and, and and we're all different and I was talking about this with my brother-in-law by the way my wife and I are visiting my wife's brother and her and her and his, my wife's brother and his wife and I think I might be getting bit by mosquitoes here hang on I can't believe it's a little <laughs> I can't believe that in on October 26th in Charleston, South Carolina, we are still struggling with mosquitoes. Bear with me just a minute. I have mosquito repellent here. Didn't think I would need it in October. Hallelujah, we are done with mosquitoes up in our part of the world. But it was hot as blazes today. I tell you, my sweat-o-meter, <laughs> or is that sweatometer? <laughs> was was off the charts today. Hey, yep. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Are there a lot of bugs out? Yes. Yes. I can't believe. I can't believe I need mosquito repellent yeah. on October 27th. Yeah. Wow, we kind of like this weather. <laughs> you do. Yeah. <laughs> so do the mosquitoes. We're from Green Bay. It's like. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna snow there. That's all right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Okay, there is a, as you can imagine, a lot of drawing. And I'm assuming you can see me, yeah, when I turn, when I turn that direction and, and hold my brushes up to, to get the angles, right? You know that trick, of course, right? Yes, yes, of course you do. Just checking, just want to make sure. The vanishing point in this painting. Oh, you know what? It will be. I was going to say it'll be off the off the canvas, but I, I don't think it will. I actually think it's probably going to be right about there, so I can start using that. Definitely. One of the benefits of these long brushes is you can they're they're long, so you can use them. You can use them to help with linear perspective. Oh, so I was talking about how all of us, I don't know if you've noticed this yet or not, <laughs> and I'm being facetious when I say that, but we all have different gifts, skills, personality, 
inclinations. We are all different, right? And more often than I would like to admit, those differences cause us diffi problems, difficulties. Because we think that other people ought to be more like us. You know, what's the matter with you? Can't you see <laughs> this or that or the other? <laughs> you know, everybody that's really good at detail administration and and management and and balancing checkbooks and all that kind of stuff, you know, that kind of personality, fastidious, detail oriented, conscientious, you know, that kind of person. Those kind of people, they think I'm an idiot. <laughs> because why can't I do all the stuff they can do? <laughs> why can't I? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm smart enough at arithmetic, so to speak, there's an old-fashioned word, eh? I'm smart enough, I know how to add, sat, subtract, and divide, and I even used to know, you know, all that other junk, sine, cosine, coefficient, <laughs> all the, a whole bunch of words I don't even know what they mean anymore. I used to know all that stuff, I kind of enjoyed math, I very much enjoyed geometry. Anyway, but that's not the point. The point is, I don't have the energy, I just do not have the energy to do things like balance my checkbook, pay my bills. <laughs> oh, now that's, see, that's where it gets you in trouble. <laughs> I don't have the energy. Thankfully, the bank pays almost all of my bills automatically, probably like all of you now. It didn't used to be that way. You know, we used to have to actually get out a checkbook every month and write a check and put a stamp on an envelope and mail it. Man, am I glad those days are over. Anyway, my point is, <laughs> We're all good at different things. So a minute ago, I was laughing up uproariously and disrespectfully at, at people who would have the, frankly, the stupidity to ask the question, well, he didn't fit the buildings in, so we're wondering if he could paint on a bigger canvas? <laughs> Did I say that with enough of a mocking tone? I hope so, because that's my intention. <laughs> But even by doing it, I'm being a bit of a jerk. <laughs> right? So in, in that regard, I expect everybody, in a sense, to be as visually um, astute, shall we say, as I am. I mean, why can't you see that? Why can't you see that shadows are blue or purple? And they scrunch up their nose and they look and say, no, the shadows are just gray. You understand? That add infinitum. There's thousands of things like that. And they look at me and say, why can't you remember to do this or that or thus and so, you know, every month? <laughs> and I look at them stupidly, like, because that's not how my brain works. Anyway, I say, on the whole, happiness has been getting older for me. I've enjoyed getting older and discovering, first of all, that I don't have to pretend that I'm good at everything. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm just, I just ain't good at. I'm just not good at this, that, and the other. And when I was a young man, I thought you had to do everything all by yourself. And I was, I'm glad to get this age and discover, oh, you know what? You don't. You pay somebody to do. So I, for the last several years. Hey, uh, yeah, man. You doing? I'm good. Taking your classes? You are just. Yes, how are you good to see you? Very good. You've got to be on the video too. Did you Did you see me? Did you see I saw on you YouTube? Mind, I was, it's got to be Nelson. And I've <laughs> Hi, John. This, I've done this painting as well. How fantastic! I remember. I know your name, yes. indeed, and your face. Now I can put them together. That's cool. <laughs> Well, we had it. I gotta stop how, saying hi. How fun! Yeah. That is so Doing good. Or just, no, no. Just, just down to Charleston. And my my wife's brother and her has his wife. Anyway, family live here in Charleston, so we're visiting oh, them. Sweet. And I said, okay, we go to Charleston. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down there and paint. Cool. How fun! Good to see Actually, you. I'm, I'm using your method of quite. Are a you really? I'm taking classes. Hey, can I turn this around? Get, hit, wave to my people who are hi watching. There. Hi there, folks. <laughs> that's, Big fan of dance. <laughs> that's that was that's John. John Sturdivant, John. former Don. Don, sort of a former yeah, so. student and uh, resident, I presume, of Charleston. Yeah, yes, yeah. You're on your, uh, <laughs> oh, right, left, 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 <laughs> right here, right, right here, right there, right. There. <laughs> yeah. So I've been showing folks your. Oh, how fun, Don! Here, so. it's good to see thank you. you, thank you. Very good to see good you. Luck. Thanks for stopping by.
How fun. <laughs> I thought at first that he had seen my seen that I was broadcasting, but that's not what happened. He was just driving by. Isn't that fun? So happiness is, for me, a big happiness as I've gotten older is discovering I don't have to do everything. The stuff I'm really bad at, I should hire out. So like I hire somebody to do my bookkeeping for me. She does a much better job than I ever would. And uh, I get to pay her for it and I don't have to do it. <laughs> it's a real bargain. <laughs> This is a, if you've never been, if you're an American, if you've never been to Charleston, South Carolina, do yourself a favor, put this on your bucket list and get yourself to Charleston, South Carolina. It is truly a jaw-dropping wonder. It really is. Um, some of you, and I guess I'm talking, hello, all you chatters. I'll get to you in a minute. Um, perhaps some of you are familiar with, uh, as we are, big fans of, of historic Williamsburg, Virginia. And we do like Williamsburg, Virginia. But whereas Williamsburg, Virginia, I don't know the numbers. You can, go, you can look it up for myself, for yourself. Maybe has 160 or 200, I don't know how many, um, historical buildings. Charleston has uh, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. And they really are historical. I mean, they're old and beautiful and fascinating. And even though some of them are not beautiful, they're just old. Those are fascinating too. All right, let me... Hmm. So thank you all, all you regulars, for your patience this week. As you can see, I, did, I, didn't, I don't think I broadcasted any past after Monday or Tuesday. And it was just one of those weeks that required much, much infrastructure. So if you want to see the, re well, I posted several things on the YouTube community. So those, all those finished images. So that's one of the things I did. I posted on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, rebuilt a website and launched, relaunched a website um, called Wedding Painter Magic. So that was, that was the biggest job. It is now mobile, forgive me for the terrible English, if you will. It's now mobile friendly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, there we go. There's, 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 these things were not coming out right. Now, I don't do this very often, but I'm going to, right here real quick, I am going to, in a sense, erase, because I'm afraid I'm going to forget that that mark right there is completely erroneous, and I'm afraid it's going to, that I'll forget, and it'll mess me up. So, there we go. So, that's all fixed up now. As you know, I love architecture. I love painting architecture. So as you can imagine, this town just puts me over the top. I just, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Just amazing, amazing old houses and buildings everywhere you turn.
Aha, there we go. There's another mistake. I knew there was one in here somewhere. Similar. This, this line is completely wrong. And again, I don't normally erase things, except, except sometimes in a very complex subject matter like this, I just, I erase it because I'm afraid that otherwise I'm just going to forget that that, that was a mistake. Does that make sense? You know. And so I will sometimes wipe things out. There, that's, yeah, that makes a lot more sense now. There we go. All right, I'm, I've taken a number of pictures already. Um, but we're getting into the, into the zone, into the lighting that it's getting closer to what I want. So my practice is typically, if I'm painting in the evening, which is, I do way more evenings than mornings, um, I take pictures that, like right now, well, I already took some, but anyway, even this picture I'm assuming is early, too early for the lighting that I actually want in the, in the painting. Does that make sense? So I'll start early and go late so that I have a full wide range of lighting. Let me show you guys again here, just a second, just a minute, let me dump some stuff off of here. Um, I'll show you this scene again. There. When the sun just, just started going dim, Right that moment, hang on, I know I'm shaking you all over the place. Let me see if I can zoom in here. And get a little better auto exposure for you. Ah, come on, come on, come on, darken for me here. Ah, not so much. Anyway, that's the, the most exciting element in the painting. And uh, you can almost not even see it when it's old, my, when the camera's overexposed. But that's this white steeple here. Well, I'm glad I took those pictures a minute ago because it's, as, as often happens, you can imagine, um, the sun uh, goes behind a cloud sometime before sundown so that we don't get, you know, dramatic lighting because it turns on dramatic bef before sunset happens. To we pointed the right way, yeah. Okay, so you know this. Some of you think that artists only do this hold up their brushes trick like in cartoons. Well, now you know. Some of us, anyway, actually do it in real life. We have sound? Yeah, barely.
Right, testing one, two, three. <coughs> <clears throat> Hello friends, I'll be with you in just a second. <clears throat> All right, we're back. I am very sorry about the broadcast interruption a while ago. I've been <clears throat> <coughs> merrily painting along. <clears throat> <clears throat> for some time as you can see and it's time now to look at some of the photographs that I have taken <clears throat> all right let's nail down some of these cars shall we for some reason not not normally my favorite part of the process <clears throat> I think it should be it, <laughs> it's, it's a weakness of mine I do a lot of cars and I don't particularly enjoy painting cars so something's wrong with me I enjoy seeing them well painted I don't particularly enjoy well painting them myself. <clears throat> all right that took me a long time to do all that pencil drawing you're lucky you missed it <laughs> it was very monotonous if I have to say so myself <clears throat> Now, let's do some painting in white. And even though I, I can reach the top of that canvas, I have learned that if, you, if the canvas is so high that you have to stretch to reach it, that you tend to, I tend to anyway, short, short circuit the process. Hello. No, of course not. Please do. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. You do this for a living? I do. Yep. I'm from North Carolina. Where in North Carolina? Raleigh. Raleigh? Yeah. So just visiting here and working while I'm visiting. Pardon? What's your name? I'm Dan Nelson. Here, let me give you a card. 
I normally have them sitting right there. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. So, sorry to say I was chattering merrily along for a long time, not realizing that I was not broadcasting, which is pretty exasperating, showing that my broadcast technology system is not yet foolproof. <clears throat> I'm still too much of a fool <laughs> to proof it. Anyway, be that as it may, good to be back, and I'll try to keep that from happening too terribly often. Um, so this now, drawing, so I would call this, this layer where I'm using fairly small white brushes. I would call this a, a drawing layer as well. So and that means this is my third go around, third um, effort at drawing the, the scene here, third layer, if you will, third layer of drawing. And with each layer, my goal is to become, is to get the image just a little bit more accurate and a little bit more detailed. I was thinking during my last break again of my my new ambition to no longer use the term loose when describing um, abstract realistic painting. The, the, the label that I give to my technique. <clears throat> Hang on. And I am feeling still like that decision is a really good one. Um, everybody, including myself, up until a couple weeks ago, all art teacher, professor, people I've ever heard have used the term loose. Loose brushwork, loose painting, nice, loose. And I have decided that it is a very counterproductive term. Because I'm convinced, and I think it even had this impact, no, I'm sure that it had this impact on my own emerging style or technique or my own journey toward painting maturity. That is, it had the effect of encouraging me to draw, to render, to paint in a sloppy manner. I'm, I'm convinced that most students, when they hear the word loose painting, that they interpolate that to mean, in fact, inaccurate painting. I'm quite convinced. It'll take me quite a while to be unconvinced. I'm quite convinced that that is the actual state of the matter. That when an early journey painter hears the word loose, they, they commence to painting in a manner that feels to them like looseness and that looseness is in fact another word for inaccurate or sloppy rendering which in actuality in my opinion is not at all what is being conveyed by the term loose you know, what at least what 
the good professors. It's not what they're trying to convey by the word loose. So instead of loose, I'm going to try to use the term. So here's my, my, my teacher. Teaching hat is firmly in place here. Do not paint loose. Do not paint for you English majors loosely. Instead, render, I'm gonna use a crazy word, I'm gonna say render tight, render accurate, render carefully, render carefully and tightly. And use not loose brush strokes, but much more to the point, use energetic brush strokes. Now, you, some of you might be looking at what I'm doing, have been doing for the last 10 minutes and saying, well, you're not using very energetic brush strokes. And, and in fact, oh, you caught me. No, I'm not. Um, I do have a, a mild, it may not be adequate, but I do have a mild rebuttal or protestation or defense, self-defense. And, and, and my self-defense may not be adequate, but here it is anyway. It's true, right now I am not um, painting in a very energetic manner. I'm painting in a slightly energetic manner. Matter, manner. But the, the stage, the phase of the, of the painting that I am in right now is not, in fact, the loose stage. Loose will come at many times, at, at many stages later. Right now, I am focused like a laser beam on accuracy. Okay, this is what I'm doing right now is what most early journey painters, well, they, they either fall off the, they fall into one mistake or the other. <laughs> they either, they, they say, oh, oh, loose, oh, and then they proceed to paint bad, to draw, to render poorly, sloppily, messily, inaccurately, because that's what it seems like the word loose means, all right? Otherwise, if, uh, on the other hand, if they are a, a personality, an artist who is good at drawing, then they don't do loose stuff at all. They just do hyper realistic, tight, 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 realistic stuff. And uh, you've heard me rant and rave about the inadvisability, I'll put it that way, of uh, tight painting ad nauseum, shall we say. I'm sick of talking about it. <laughs> You're probably sick of hearing it, so, so I shan't. <laughs> this time, come back. I'm sure I'll be ranting about it again sometime in the not too distant future. But at the moment, I am not trying to paint with en very energetic brush strokes. Slightly, but not very. I am focused, as I said, like a laser beam. I am focused on accurate rendering, okay? That's because loose painting does not mean inaccurate painting. And if you can get, about, get a hold of that, if you're an early journey painter, that means if you are early in your painting journey, I just saved you roughly 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. <laughs> so please do pay attention to that. Do not paint loose, paint tight as a drone, paint render accurately. And then add energy to your accurate rendering. Now let me give you just one more 
sort of in defense of myself slightly when I say here that I am, I'm, I'm not being very energetic in my strokes right now. And I, and I pled guilty to that accusation, said, yeah, guilty as charged. I'm not being very loose. But on the other hand, let me point out, as I, I mentioned the other day, I had watched a young man on YouTube, one of the many, 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 many artists on YouTube, early journey artists, who are good drawers, and so they, they paint very, very realistic. They copy photographs, and they copy them very carefully and accurately. And hello. Hi, good evening, sir. <laughs> hello. Thanks for sneaking up. Just didn't come and look in wonderment. <laughs> thank you. I <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> look away. So I was watching this young man I mentioned, I mentioned this on Monday or Tuesday of this past week. And uh, he was doing a fairly large, maybe 30 by 40 inch canvas. It had a purdy sunset, purdy mountains, purdy hills, purdy trees, purdy bushes, purdy lake. Are you irritated enough yet by my mispronunciation of the word purdy, pretty? Yeah. I know it's kind of nasty of me. I'm hoping to rescue some of you early journey artists from making the mistake this young man is making. And he had, much to my chagrin, <laughs> so you can ask me, do I hear some sour grapes in there? The answer is heck yes. <laughs> he, um, he had hundreds of thousands, I believe, of subscribers. And each of his videos was garnering tens of thousands of views. So am I envious? Well, maybe. Should I be? No. Am I? I like to think I'm not. I like to think I'm not. But yeah, it irritates the fire in me. Not that he had lots of views, but that so many people are schnookered and suckered into thinking that's good painting. But that is what ordinary folks think. I, I, I guess I just have to admit that. That is what ordinary folks think. So, but here's, I, here's the kicker, here's the punchline to that, this story, cause, and this is related to me, me saying, okay, so I'm not being real energetic, but he did the entire painting, it, the entire thing was tongue painted. You know what tongue painting, right? He used a tiny little brushes, I, I'm not kidding, like quarter inch brush on a canvas of size. Every little square inch of it was like this, because he was painting realism, maybe not hyper-realism, but serious photocopying. And here's the kicker. He had carpal tunnel syndrome. And that, frankly, broke my heart. He looked like he was in his 20s. And already, I mean, the reason for painting loose is not to avoid, is not just to avoid carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> you understand. <laughs> but by golly, that is one side benefit. Um, you should not be painting in such a manner. So, this, this is tight painting. Of course, I don't mean with a brush this long, but you know what I mean. That's, that's tight painting. And that is god-awful tight, pa tight painting. 90% <laughs> of the paintings that I do, I never hold the brush in. And it sounds like I'm bragging. No, but I do want to make the point for you, again, for you early journey painters. The only time I hold my brush in this manner is to do my signature. Now, every once in a while in a painting, I, in fact, I do hold, hold my brush in that got off away. Uh, but most of the time I do not. And many, many, many of you do need to uh, pay, and not just pay attention, but I, I would like you to, again, you early journey painters are holding your brushes like this. You need to look at me and say, golly, he holds his brush. And, and of course, yes, I, I used to be nice and kind about this. I am no longer. I used to say, well, you can hold your, you can paint with two hands if you want to. Now I'm saying, no, you're an idiot if you don't. I'm showing you how to do it. Michelangelo showed you how to do it. Artists, for some strange reason, have been given a free pass. 
doctors, musicians, athletes, all of them use two hands with great skill. And you can too. For some reason, artists have just been given a free pass. Like, no, it's okay if you just paint with one hand. Now, I'm not saying that's stupid. You're gonna be silly. God gave you two hands because he expected you to use them. I don't mean that literally. It's just a convenient, you know, figure of speech. <laughs> no, maybe I do mean it literally. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> hey Matt, good to hear you, um, let me think, I guess I need to do some, I'm going to do some opaque color, I don't want to do this, this whole wall here, um, white, so I'm going to do it Mix orange with my white and do opaque orange. So anyway, did I make myself clear? Again, for all you early journey painters, if nothing else, I hope that I can, I can knock you out of the horrible habit of holding your brush in that truly reprehensible manner. I'm using really strong words because <laughs> I'm trying to change your life. <laughs> Don't watch him. He's trying to change your life for the better. <laughs> Um, I've had some people sort of take me to task on that over the years. It usually goes something like this. Well, well, that's the tone of the voice. That's my mockery tone, of course. You recognize that. Well, well, when I was in art school, I had this art teacher. I had this drawing teacher, and he never held his pencils that way. No, the side saddle. In other words, he held them in the traditional death control grip. And forgive me. Oh, God. And he was a damn good drawer. Way better than you. <laughs> okay. That's a little bit of little trollishness going on in that conversation, be that as it may. Um, and sometimes, actually, I've, I've looked up the, the professor in question. And, and more often than not, he was not a good drawer. He, and he was, some of them even making decent money and more famous than I. Um, he was a good renderer in spite of the fact that he gripped the drawing or painting utensil in that god-awful death control grip. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give up that argument easily. And you simply saying, well, my professor's better draw than you, and he didn't hold it that way probably won't fly with me. I won't buy it. I don't believe it. And if he did held his brush or pencil in that manner and managed to draw well, he would draw even better if he grew up and broke the habit, got out of that. What is actually the case is many times early journey painters honestly can't tell the difference between really quality work and frankly realistic work that that's what that's what fools youngsters young teenagers and 20 somethings and early 30 somethings that's the that's what fools and i remember that season of life i wasn't sure that loose was better either at the time um my friends and i were painting it in 
Beaufort week before last, our annual painting trip. David, Richard, Rusty, and Mike and I. And uh, the subject of Zorn. Anders, uh, I forget, he was, he was um, Swedish anyway, Zorn, a contemporary of, uh, I think it is Anders. Anders Zorn, a contemporary of um, John Singer Sargent. John Singer Sargent was American, Anders Zorn, who worked in America as well for much of his career. Um, both of them, absolute outrageous giants in, of skill. Um, and yeah, I would say to some of you, if you wonder, if you wonder if you are able to spot and identify good rendering, then I would say, yeah, go to, go look at Anders Zorn, Z-O-R-N, early 20th century. And then of course, John Singer Sargent goes without saying. Um, they are good renderers. Many times early journey painters are, are tricked, fooled, um, deceived by realistic or, or rendering and think that that's good drawing. Anyway, okay, enough, enough of that. <laughs> so all that was to say, I'm going to try not to use the term loose painting anymore because I think it's mis misleads most people because it, it looks to them like we mean careless, inaccurate, or loose drawing. And I'm still very much in the pretty much the tight phase of this painting because the drawing has to be accurate. Okay, that's part of what I'm saying, right? The, it has to be accurate. I will be adding, hopefully, to the proper degree, I'll be adding lots and lots and lots of energetic um, brushwork on top of this. Does that make sense? So in a sense, I, and I think this is pretty typical, the underpainting phase is the time for tightness and accuracy. some of these cars a little bit. Now all that is not to say, by the way, that I that I that it, that I may not that I may not mature, I hope I mature in my painting process, painting technique. I hope I mature a great deal compared to where I'm where I am right now, um, that kind of, that cannot be rushed. Really, the way you mature is by going through. You can't go around. You have to go through the process. That means just paint, just do it, just do the work. Somebody in our town calls, just do get your get your mileage in. Just do painting miles. They call it. <laughs> So now there's a, a group of people in our town, Raleigh, that refer to painting miles and get together to paint. Anyway, there's, so I do hope that I will mature and it's very possible that in that maturation process, um, I will learn how to achieve a high degree of realism and a high degree of energy at the same time. At the moment, I'm not really doing that. My, my strategy at this time is more like accuracy than energy, then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That doesn't mean, though, I may not get better 
I sure hope I do, and, and be able to do both at the same time. Oops, that car's a little long. Okay, let's see if we can fix that real quick. Real quickly for you English majors. Forgive me, I have, a, I have an inner English major in my head at all times, you may have noticed. <laughs> I have a, the echoes of a mother who spoke the king's English better than the king. And I have other members of my family <laughs> who like to ridicule. Anytime, oh, say it ain't so. Anytime anybody uses improper usage. Oh, yes, they do. Anyway. <laughs> but I'm in counseling for it. And I'm taking pills. That's a joke. I'm not taking pills. Nor am I in, nor am I in counseling. But... <laughs> <laughs> Despite the world's best efforts to drive me crazy, I am generally regarded by society as a whole to be not too crazy at the moment. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, all that had to do with the English major comment. <laughs> I'm going to draw these people here in light instead of dark. Partly just because I can't even see them when they're dark. So <laughs> I usually start, my, pe my people usually start out as a black or dark silhouette. But there you go. I just started that one as a light silhouette. was a sigh, wasn't it? Are you tired, Mr. Dan? That'd be, yeah, pretty much. Kinda, sorta. And it's only 7.30, the night is still young. All right, clean these brushes. I know what I'm gonna do. Normally at this point, I would do um, some big, broad, glazes but two problems one is some of this white is not dry um, more than that I'm not I'm not completely happy with my uh, all of my all of my rendering so let me let me tighten up some of the rendering just a little bit um, it's all very light and pastel -y, as you can see right now and and uh, so I'm wanting to come in and add a little bit more punch to some of the rendering. There, there was an energetic stroke. Did you see that? I'll be doing more, don't worry. So right now I have some purple on my brushes. And that's, that's energy there. The, the, the random-ish, the random, um, that there are many ways to do I don't want you to I don't want you to get stuck thinking oh I should do one of those you know big sweeping arching strokes af after every no 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 that's just one that's just one way to do it okay here's another whoops take a brush handle and just rub it through whatever you just did Yeah, I'm liking the look of this. I'm going to add some some blue to my purple. Just for fun. Oh, oh and look at I'm holding my brushes in the death control grip. How about that? It doesn't quite count though the same when you when you do both brushes and at the same time like this. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but it doesn't. It's that's 
That's not a death control grip when you're doing it with two hands for some reason. Maybe I'm just giving myself excuses. Well, it, it doesn't. It's not. A, it's not coming out from the. It's not coming out of the control freak center of my brain. I can tell you that for sure. All right. This is kind of fun. You know. Um, speaking of energetic strokes and energetic strokes and accurate or precise drawing um, the activity the, the, the execution of those two things uh, is very contrasty, very different one from the other. How it feels to do, what it feels like to do real loose energetic marks and what it feels like to do tight, accurate, drawing-ish, rendering marks feels very different in your brain, right? That's, I'm sure that's quite obvious, it makes sense. Um, I'm going to I'm say something I've never said before. I've thought of an, an analogy that maybe maybe some of you could relate to if I just describe it. I I want to say that y you and I we should be able to uh, experience a kind of pleasure with each of those activities. You experience one kind of pleasure when you're doing accurate drawing. And all those of you who are good drawers, you know exactly what that, what that particular pleasure feels like. You know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> to use some old hippie language, it's a real gas, man, it's a gas. It's a gas to be, to be able to draw, render stuff accurately. It's fun. It's, a, it's very um, empowering. You, you feel like you're, you're powerful. I'm not kidding, this is true. Those of you who, don't, who can't draw well, you may not know this. You should take time out and learn how to draw well so you can experience a sense of empowerment, the sense of, whoa. I have power. And I know that's exactly actually why, you know, these people I talk about on the internet that do all this, you know, I, I spent 600 hours drawing this human eyeball kind of, kind of stuff. The, as again, the internet is just full of this kind of crap. <laughs> but I know, I, I understand how the artists, those young artists, early journey painters, I, I do understand how they feel. There is a, it's, it's intoxicating. It's a feeling of power to be able to do that. Say, my hand executed, rendered this, this um, object. I drew it by hand, so to speak. And, and all your friends go, wow, oh my God. <laughs> and you get all kinds of comments online. Oh my God! <laughs> Maybe you can tell. I really don't. I really detest that phrase. But anyway, but it, it is ubiquitous. It is what it is. And it is what people in our culture say. <laughs> um, so there is a pleasure. I'm, I, I'm admitting there is a pleasure in doing accurate, realistic rendering. There's a sense of power, and it's okay. That is absolutely okay. And um, there is also a pleasure, a very different feeling kind of pleasure. So it doesn't feel the same at all, but it is nonetheless a real pleasure in, in um, 
executing energetic marks. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so two kinds of pleasure, two distinct kinds of pleasure. In my opinion, you should experience both of them, not one or the other, but both. So for instance, at this moment, while I am still really focused on accurate rendering, I'm experiencing the former of those two, the feeling of power, so to speak. It's like, I have power in my hands. Of course, you and I know it's not in our hands, it's in our brain, but anyway, be that as it may, I have real power and that's okay, that's a good feeling. And then, in a little while, I'm going to take big four inch brushes and I'm going to glaze, you know, I'm going to lay down a strong, bold, abstract marks. And that also gives me, the painter, the maker, pleasure. Very different kind of pleasure, but pleasure nonetheless. And I recommend that very strongly. I ended up not using the analogy, but here's what it was going to be. When I was, I ran, I ran um, cross country and track in college. I was not a star, but I was a, a capable runner, I would say. You know, I, I placed like in the state meet, so to speak. You know what I mean? Not first, but somewhere in the, like, top 10 and I continued to run for many years after college and coached and so on and so forth but I remember and probably probably in some ways was at my fastest in college although I did break my, my personal mile record after college so maybe I was better anyway I remember in those days I, I'm, I'm like far from that now now I can barely ride my bike as fast as I used to run <laughs> that is the truth that's the gospel truth <laughs> Uh, I'm riding my bike and and my little computer voice says your time for that mile was four minutes and 38 seconds and I go dang I used to run faster than this <laughs> um, anyway I remember in those heady years when I was and I, again I was nobody great but still I experienced the pleasure that when I was in really good shape um, on the days that we ran speed work, sprints, hills and sprints, hills and sprints, we, the runners, being in pretty elite condition, we loved the speed. All right, we are we back? I got interrupted for just a moment. I think I caught it that time. Um, and then on the days when we did distance, which was a very different kind of workout from the days in which we did speed, we also experienced pleasure. So we'd run just pretty much just long and not, not slow by any means. You know, under six minutes a mile, at least that was not slow for me. You know, 15 miles at six minutes a mile. And it, that was a very different kind of pleasure, very real kind of pleasure, but very different from the speed workout. So that was an analogy I was thinking of as, as artists, we could and should be able to, whoops, we could should be able to operate or experience these two, two kinds of pleasure. One is the pleasure of throwing paint, throwing paint around with great abandon and creativity. And the other is um, tight, accurate, detailed rendering. Two very different uh, sensations, but both uh, pleasant and, and very much um, productive. In, in doing a good painting. So once again, I am, I am still here. I've spent most of this painting so far in the whatever, in the tight. So I should be feeling like, if I'm doing it right, I should be feeling like, dang, I am good. I am good at drawing. Look at this, look at this, look at this. 
By the way, for what it's worth, um, you never experience that if you always cheat, quote unquote, cheat. And I've talked about this a whole bunch, so don't hair trigger on me. If, if you're a new listener, don't, don't comment. Don't, don't say anything like, but it's not cheating. If you're a new listener, you just, no, you just hang tight on this one. We've got too much mileage on this conversation for you to jump in and say, but it's not cheating. Okay, so here's, here's, I'll give it to you real quick. All cheating is legal. And by cheating, I mean any photomechanical method whatsoever used to copy or render or trace the object, okay? Measuring, gridding, um, tracing, projecting, all of that. Okay, so first of all, it's all legal, okay? The, the, most of the greats did it. <laughs> all of the greats have done it. Okay, so it's, it's legal. There you go. Are you, set, are you okay with that? There's a big butt coming, right? I'm a man full of big butts, as I said earlier. <laughs> but if you employ those cheater methods um, frequently, you lose your ability, your, your brain shrinks. <laughs> That's not literal, of course, I'm being figurative. Save your comments. <laughs> um, if you employ those, those grid, measure, trace, grid, project, whatever, if you employ those, those techniques uh, frequently, repeatedly, often, your own, your own skills deteriorate. Oh, look at this. There is a, there's a palm tree across the street. I don't need to put it in here, but I, th I think it, I think it's good. It goes right here. Glad I noticed that. The later you wait to add, using my technique, which is layers and layers and layers of transparent stuff, the longer you wait to add elements like that, the, the more problematic it becomes. So this is not too late yet, but I'm glad I didn't, I'm glad I didn't wait, miss it any later than this. I've got a couple decisions to make. One is there's actually a palm tree up in the corner in my photograph, just the fronds, not the, not the trunk. Nah, I don't think I need that one. But there is indeed a, a palm tree behind this, this house, this building here. And I do think that that, that one is a, is a must have. There, a couple, several palm trees actually. Palm trees are certainly a major element in the, the feeling of this, of this town. It would not feel like Charleston if it didn't have palm trees in it, so. Right, I feel better about that now. I, I was going to do a glaze, and then I said, no, let's do, let's do another layer of rendering. So that was my um, fourth drawing right there. That, that what I just did was fourth time of rendering, drawing on this painting, and at least four more to go. Now, hallelujah, it is, it is time, it is time to do some bold, big, bold glazes. Before I do that though, I just want to smear some of this paint so it'll dry more quickly. 
Okay, so this what I'm doing right now is definitely not rendering, not act. That's that's energy, right? Yes. Hello. Thank you. Um, I cannot do a glaze on that yet because it's way too wet. So forgive me. I thought I was going to do it right now, but I can't. So I'm going to take just a few minutes to do some uh, pencil drawing while I wait for that to dry. And this area over here, I feel like could use some more. Did I put down my photograph? There it is. For a minute there, I completely lost my. Oh, yeah, as I thought. The side of this church, as you can imagine, has a whole bunch of windows all down the side of it. So. Now, the, the drawing I'm doing now, as you can maybe tell, is much less renderly, <laughs> rendery, much less drawerly, and much more just, ab just uh, abstract texture. Some drawing, but, but not nearly as careful as this, all the stuff I did earlier. There's a sign on this the building right here to the left. And I'm not sure whether to include it. Yeah. Okay. I just obliterated the the, the, the roof of that house. Maybe I should move the sign down here. No. Let me feel this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it must be really humid out here. And that is not a pleasant mark right there. So it is must be really humid because this painting is way wet. OK, I don't have any choice but to continue to do just some drawing with pencils while that dries. So two weekends from now is uh, 
out of the Carolinas. I still have way too many empty seats in my drawing class. That dismays me a little bit. <laughs> because, because I know what people need. Uh, and they near, they, the answer is they need to learn how to draw. And uh, boy, if there's any way you can make it to Raleigh, North Carolina, the second weekend in November, please do so. I'm going to be pull out all the stops, do the very best job that I can to teach. It's a topic I've taught very often over the years. I'm just going to take all the lessons I've learned from all those years of teaching and really pull out all the stops, as they say. It's an organ term. You knew that, right? This is about as exciting as watching paint dry. <laughs> okay, tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm, my feet are getting sore just standing here waiting. So, um, well, let me read some of your chats and then we take a little break, but, but just a real little break, I promise, like 10 minutes at the most. Let me go see what you guys are talking about. I'll have to look up, Matt, I have to look up Franklin Booth. Oh, inking. Now you're in a different world, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know who that is, but it sounds like a, a render, or it sounds like illustrator. I meant to say illustrator. It sounds like an illustrator, right? And yeah, my pen and ink stuff is tight too, although I don't consider that my best pen and ink work. Anyway. <laughs> Good to hear from you, Redina. Yeah, paint and listen. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> praying for your golden retriever puppy. Hey, Jess from Sheffield, UK. Good to hear you. Thanks for commenting. Good. Keep on using two hands. Hello, Uncle 60. <laughs> Old man. <laughs> Just do I ever lead with my left hand? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I make try to make it a point. <laughs> Good. Keep going. Keep going, Uncle 60. Keep trying it again. <laughs> Don't quit. All right, so just a little break here, I promise. 10 minutes, I'm hoping, at the most, because this is just too wet. But I think it'll, it'll be dry in less than 10 minutes, and I'll be back. So I will not start a new broadcast. I'll just a little pause in this one, okay? And Uncle says, I noticed the oil dries funny over the acrylic area. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to know what you mean by that. Uncle 60, um, that, that doesn't sound right. It should not drive funny. The oil should not. So I'm sure you mean something very cogent, but I don't know what it is. Um, hmm. Maybe offline. Give me a, either a picture or a more detailed description, because that does not ring a bell at all. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. All right, I'm back. I see Redina and Uncle Sixty conversing about oil on top of acrylic. Huh, I do not understand sinking in. Hmm, very interesting. Huh, I don't know. Um, this is mostly dry, I just ran my fingers over it. Got my hands very dirty in the process. I mean, very painty, not dirty. But I think I think it'll hold together. All right. So before before I do glazes, this is a good opportunity to just do some fun, random abstraction. Now, this is these are these are actually called water soluble pastels made by Charvin. And, and most of this will not be visible, you know, it'll, but, but it'll leave little 
ghosts of of color, which is I, I find I like quite a bit. All right, now time for some serious glazing. Get my four inch brushes up here. Whoa, oh, I hate it when this happens. Pick up a brush and find that it's kind of stiff. All right, that'll have to do. Um, and I'm gonna do, with this glaze, I am going to do mostly local, that is to say realistic color. But I want it to be, some of it to be quite, quite light. So in order to get, so I just dip my brushes in phthalo blue, rub them together quite a bit. And this is a acrylic medium. Even that's too dark. So a little bit more water. Okay, a little while ago I was talking about the different kinds of pleasure you could and should experience. One kind is the feeling of power, really, when you're doing realistic, accurate, tight rendering, doing whatever you need to do to get the job done. That's fun. And then this right here, this is also fun. It's a very different kind of fun. The feeling of complete, you know, freedom and so forth. But fun nonetheless, okay? Thank you. Oh, that did not work well. Oh, the dead, that was not good at all. I managed to get a glaze on it, but then when I rubbed it with a rag, I went down three layers and wiped off a whole bunch of work. Okay, don't do that. Note yourself, don't do that again. I'm gonna do a similar thing now, but with purple. Wait just a minute, let's get all the excess water. The, the, the one really downside about these cheap chip brushes is that the ferrules, the metal part here, fills up with water. And can you see that? I don't think you can see that. Just dripping, dripping, dripping. That, that is not, that is not helpful. Okay, once again more medium. So things now that are in shadow, including this, this building at a, with a definite angle. Of a, of a shadow, shadow at an angle. And this whole building in sh shadow. Wow, what a mess I've made. So I really should have waited longer. Darn. Yeah, I mean, I'm creating a glorious mess. So in the long run, it, it, won't, it won't matter. It'll be all right. It just means I've given myself a little bit more work to do than I really wanted. Um, time to me really does matter. That is how long, how much time I take to do a painting. That really does matter to me. Um, I uh, spent most of my adult life as an illustrator. Cut my teeth, if you will, and as an illustrator and. Um, that, that in that world, really, frankly, it's it's all about time. You just have to bust your buns and get the job done fast. Um, your client is waiting for you. It's always a killer deadline. It's always the end of the world if you don't get it to them on time. Plus, that's how you make your money is by is by executing your work quickly, so you get a decent rate per hour. And I still have a lot of that in me, I think. And it's still very, very practical. Um, you cannot make a living as an artist 
if you just take your time. <laughs> I just, I don't know how else to say it. The hard reality, and, and of course that is a big part of what separates, say, me, if you will, us professionals from the, from the not so professionals, is the, 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 the amateurs have the luxury. It doesn't mean they don't have skill, maybe extraordinary or exquisite skill, but they can't make money because they can't paint fast enough to get the job done. Anyway, so all that is to say, I just, I just lengthened out the process a little bit, which is a bummer. But on the other hand, I sure did make some fascinating marks on the canvas. A, a slurry, I like that word, a slurry. Um, I have just a, a, a slurry of paint. <laughs> It's all wet. It's all very wet now. Wet and running together. In fact, do doing all the things that, forgive me for over -char characterizing, but it's doing all the things that you early journey tidies. Can I call you tidies? I love you, man. I love you, whoever you are. But those of you stuck in the, in the tidy, tight, end of the journey um in tight not in tight tight phase of the journey it, my my paints are doing everything that you can't stand <laughs> what <laughs> running together slurring s smooshing you know what what other words can i use just hang on hang on looking for a picture that shows me there we go whoa it shows me accurately what's going on up here in this belfry. I'm not sure it's a belfry. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure, Of course it's a belfry. Somewhere in here, <laughs> theoretically. There's, there's supposed to be bells. And I did actually hear them ringing. Or it was a recording, you know, one or the other. Earlier this evening. Okay, let's get this and some one of my new people asked if I ever led with my left hand and I'm going to do that right now. Let me answer because that was a very good question. Let me answer it more in a more detailed manner right now. Um, I'm still very much right handed. There's no question. So if if being ambidextrous means there's no distinction between your hands, then I am absolutely not ambidextrous. Now, if being ambidextrous means you can you can, in this case, paint in a fairly controlled manner, then absolutely I am ambidextrous. So I think that's what most people mean. So I say, yes, I'm ambidextrous, but I'm still right-handed. Um, dominant right hand. Um, and if in my laziness, if I'm ever tired, worn out, like now, now would be a good candidate for being when I've you know, I, I, I'm not so much tired out from painting, which started at 5.30 this evening, but I'm tired for the hour before that when it was 90 degrees and in the sun, and I was just, sweat was just running off my face and running, I couldn't see because, because, you know, the, the kind of thing, because my eyes were just filled with sweat, that kind of irritating, really irritating. And I even thought about it while, while it was happening, I said, you know, you have to be aware that this this kind of thing um, takes it out of you. You know, don't. I was sort of saying to myself, "Don't be an idiot." Acknowledge that when you're sweating by the gallon, um, you're going to pay a price for that. You know. Anyway, so here I am, tired. Anyway, I'm sorry that was such a detour. <laughs> ADD. Um, So and when I am tired, which is like now I might be tired, um, I tend to revert to my dominant hand. For that very reason, because I'm aware of that fact, I actually try to make a, a concerted effort 
when I am tired to, in fact, go to my left hand. Be careful not to revert to left hand. And for that reason, or related reason, when I in, am, in fact, painting with my left hand, I always, virtually always, have the feeling, this is really weird, but listen, this is a, I know this is a, another one of those mean commercials where I'm being mean to you guys, saying stop that one-handed stuff. Stop it. In a hundred years, people will look back at artists and say, can you believe it? All artists used to paint with one hand. It's crazy. Um, you like looking back and seeing that piano players, there used to be two people played, you know, one to play the bass clef and one the treble clef. That would be absurd. Anyway, so uh, almost always when I am, in fact, painting with my left hand, I have the distinct feeling, and I can't prove that it's correct, but I absolutely have the feeling that I am painting well. Whatever I'm doing at that moment, I'm actually painting well. That's weird. That is weird, weird, weird. Can't prove it, Don't, not interested in trying to prove it, but that is how it feels, and I think generally it is correct. Um, conversely, when I'm painting with my right hand, I may or may not be painting well. Now, please don't, don't, please understand, when I'm painting with my right hand, I have a higher degree of control. And for, for many of you, that in control equals good painting. Understand it from someone from my perspective point of view, au contraire. <laughs> um, that feeling of control is actually uh, bad painting, not good painting. Hmm. All right, so there, enough about left-handed painting. Let's go back to the, the slurry. <laughs> the slurry with a fringe on top. Oh boy. <laughs> um. Again, the, the very thing that makes early journey painters turn white with consternation is the very thing that I'm saying is probably good painting. This, definitely not controlled by me, mess that's happening on the canvas. <laughs> Okay, this might be as good a time as any for any, any of you, any of my landscape painting friends or who do, who ever have a building, if you ever have a, a building or any other kind of flat plane, by the way, including a pond or a lake or an ocean, have a flat plane in your, in your painting, it's time to take the flat plane oath. Okay, I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna keep painting, but I want you to do it. If you haven't taken the flat plane oath, now's, 
better good a time as any. Raise your left hand, put your right hand on your heart, and repeat after me. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. <laughs> now why it is at that moment that you suddenly turned into um, John or Robert Kennedy, I have no idea. It's just a, evidently a ghost, a ghost from my childhood. <laughs> anyway, I do solemnly swear. <laughs> you don't really need to do this, by the way. But by golly, you need to do the you need to do the promise thing. Okay, I do solemnly swear. Got it? That I will never again paint a flat plane in a flat manner. So help me God. <laughs> there. We we didn't do your hand on a Bible thing, did we? So <laughs> this, so help me God is optional. Recommended. <laughs> okay, what in the world am I talking about? <laughs> Some of you, you old timers all know. Here it is. That is an oath I have taken. So there are several flat planes. Anytime you paint a city, there's liable to be a bunch of flat planes. Build flat sides of buildings, right? Flat things. And, and the oath is that you will never paint them again. Essentially, you'll never paint them again without putting a bold, usually at an angle, shadow or sunlight hitting it. And I'm about to start demonstrating that for you right here. It's hinted at here. So here is here is a a plane. This is a railing up here, and this is just a bunch of layers of whatever. The side of a building, right? Bad painter paints it all flat because that's the way it was in the photograph. That, that's the typical answer, okay? Good painter says, oh no, 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 I have taken the oath. <laughs> I will never again paint a flat plane in a flat manner. I will make sure, come hell or high water, <laughs> that I will put a strong shadow, usually at an angle, across that plane, just like I'm doing right here. Do you see that? Boom, shadow, sun. See this flat plane right here? Shadow, sun. All this is in sun, but it's rounded, so that's it's not, you know, this is a big flat plane. There it's rounded. Um, there you go. So the most obvious, and the sign as well. This will all be in shade except for one corner. We'll have sun on it. Just do that one little bitty trick and you will be a better painter. At the end of all the swearing, <laughs> oathing, you will find yourself in a new land of better painting. Medina says, I uh, know, Dan, you're not ambidextrous. If you were, you would hammer with both hands, etc. Red letters with both hands, etc. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Burst my bubble, Redina. <laughs> Might it be a matter of degrees, perhaps? Some people are more ambidextrous than others. Would that be admissible because I guess I, I mean honestly most people look at me and say wow you're ambidextrous because you paint with two hands anyway I don't I don't have no need to fight defend myself
All right, all of a sudden, just in the last couple of minutes, painting beginning to take on the, the essence of, of painterliness. And that, that means that the composition, capital, capital D design, the composition begins to uh, emerge as clearly what is happening here. I have basically a large V of light and the rest is dark. So very possibly, very possibly a good painting because of that. All right, and I think I'm going to stop broadcasting there. I'm not sure if I'm going to stop painting or not. I might paint a little bit more. Um, I believe because of the humidity out here tonight. Um, welcome to Charleston. <laughs> uh, I think I really need to wait. and I, I, It would not be wise to do an oil glaze on top of this. It, it's, even if I waited 30 minutes, I'm afraid there would still be pockets of this that would be wet. So... I think I'll take a little break while well, in broadcasting, take a break from painting, come back and decide whether I want to paint any more tonight or not. All right. Thank you for your company. Thanks for all your chats and conversation. I appreciate it. Hello, Jody. I'm glad I saw your question. I am in Charleston, South Carolina. Beautiful, beautiful uh, city. Honestly, I love, as you know, I love painting architecture and I'm just... Um, What's the word? Like a kid in a candy store. This town is unbelievable. Uh, historic buildings on uh, downtown. Every street is just crazy. And this is one of the more grandiose, of course, elements of the art. This right here is very typical Charleston. The upstairs porch, south facing. So, and the palm trees, of course, likewise. All right, thank you guys for your company. Little break and I will proceed tomorrow, about five o'clock tomorrow evening. I'll sit up down here again, Lord willing, and uh, continue with oils and hope to finish the painting tomorrow night. I well, I won't quite finish because I'll take one more day after that to do a, a last glaze, but I hope to make 90% tomorrow. Okay, thanks for watching. Huh, that's interesting, Redina. Very cool. Okay, bye.